concussion is something that has become such a hot topic in the last few years and even going back five or ten years ago it really wasn't something that all but a handful of researchers were focusing on. Helmets were originally intended to address a particular injury, uh, skull fractures. They're actually very good at that. Current helmets were never intended to deal with concussion. What was important for us uh, designing these helmets is that we wanted to be based on science and engineering. Both Sam and I wanted this not to be an incremental change or, or a marginal change. We wanted to shake up the field, uh, do kind of a paradigm shift in helmet design to really make an improvement. We had the opportunity to start from scratch with the idea of how do you build the best helmet, a helmet that's going to reduce forces to the largest extent possible, in particular address the forces that are thought to lead to concussion. I think when people think about a, a blow to the head, the brain and the skull move together. And in fact, they don't. Because the brain floats in cerebral spinal fluid, what happens is as the head moves back and forth, the brain can actually move within the skull. And when this happens, you can actually get brain injury because of this differential movement between the brain and the skull. What you see here is, is a test rig where we do impact testing of helmets. You see uh, helmets mounted on a head form, and the head form is instrumented by an accelerometer that can measure acceleration in three linear directions and three rotational directions. We impact the, the helmet at different locations, different angles, and, and try to optimize the performance of our, our helmets and also to compare it to uh, the existing helmets. What's different with this helmet, it allows protection against straight impacts, so that you have the compression and buckling of these, these members, and also the structure here is also flexible in the rotation direction. So if you get a glancing blow, the helmet will deflect in the rotational sense. It's a layer design, and, and the, each layer acts with each other. It's an interplay between the layers, and to optimize that interplay has been a major challenge. Concussions have become a big economic issue for the NFL because there's a $1 billion lawsuit between the owners and the former players working its way through the courts right now. And as we've seen in recent years, as some notable players have come down with CTE, and we've really started to look and examine head injuries in the NFL, concussions have really come to the fore. CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, is really, I think, what we referred to many, many years ago in boxers as dementia pugilistica. We have just now had some consensus amongst the experts as to what it looks like in a pathological analysis of somebody's brain after they've died. Starting a few years ago, the NFL implemented rules to prevent helmet-to-helmet -helmet hits, which it hopes will reduce concussions. They have protocols now in place where they're checking players on the sidelines when they think they may have been concussed. They're bringing these players into the locker rooms and having them medically checked. And don't forget, what we're talking about here is a $63 billion industry. That's the number you attach to the sum of all the team values in the 32 league NFL. It's in their financial benefit because these players now make millions of dollars and quite frankly, if your top employees are getting hurt, it may impact their ability to play, it may impact team performance, and I think one of the things the NFL is most concerned with is in future years where there'll still be as many people who want to play professional football.
Tiger Woods will go and get a custom set of golf clubs. But you take Russell Wilson as an example, he's making $20 million a year. He wears the same helmet that you and I could go purchase across the street at Dick's Sporting Goods store. So it, does, it just doesn't make sense why that's the case. There should be better technology, custom fit, a variety of things that go toward solving this problem. It's critical that the helmet's available to youth athletes, and our development plan is to be able to scale uh, manufacturing and production over the next few years, bring the price point down uh, to a point that it's accessible to uh, uh, anyone who would want the helmet. We're the next Nike, but with a different slant. The reason we started Vices is to improve the health and safety of athletes as a core principle. What I see the future of Vices becoming is that's really our, our bread and butter. There will be a variety of products that come out over time that are uh, along those uh, lines of attack. We want to make sports safer, better, healthier for the individual. And I think if we can do that, scale appropriately, uh, the sky is the limit.